So hello and good evening, this is Ruth Pozuelo from Curval.com and today is time again for another DAX Fridays. This DAX Friday is meant for beginners, so if you're not, perhaps you want to watch it anyhow, there are some things that you might not know. But uh, we are going to talk about what is the difference between calculated columns and measures. I cannot believe I haven't done this video yet, but hmm, better late than never. So without any more delay, let's jump ahead. Okay, so first of all, calculated columns. What is that? So a calculated column is used for row by row calculations like in Excel. And I know this doesn't say anything to you, so I'm going to give you an example. Let's go to Power BI. So here, it, here we are in Power BI and this is the North Wind uh, data set. There is a data set provided by Microsoft that it is available online for, just, for you to just consume. So I will post a link below to a video on how to use it if you want to do it. But with that said, what we have here is just a set of tables. We have, um, this is a fictitious company. We have tables for products, orders, order details, uh, calendar, customers and categories. Okay, so back to what we were going to do. What is a calculated column? So if you come from the Excel world, this will seem very intuitive for you. We have here a table that has unit price, quantity and discount. And what we want to calculate is the total sales. So what is the amount of sales that we have by order? And in Excel, you will go cell by cell. You will do it on the first cell and then you will drag and the calculation will repeat on all rows. Here, you do it with a calculated column. So you, I did that too fast. Let's do it again. Modeling and then new column. Okay, and uh, we are going to call this total sales. And here's how you do. To create calculated columns, you refer to the table that you want to work with. In this case, it's order details. And then you get the column that you want, unit price. Another way to write DAX that is a little bit faster is to just write unit price. And then you will get the right syntax for you. So we have unit price. So we want to have the price minus the discount times the quantity. Okay, so this is the price times the discount times the quantity. Okay. So this is exactly the same in Excel. And the reason why you would use a calculated column is because you need to do this row by row operation. You need to go this row, that row, that row, that cell and calculate here. On this row, you need this and this and this calculate here and so on. So you press enter and you get a calculation. Okay, so this is what I mean row by row calculation. So let's move on to have to get more details about what a calculated column is. So now we know what it means by use row by row. So let's move on. Something that you need to understand about calculated columns is they're pre-calculated and stored in memory. Okay, pre-calculated, it means that for you to be able to work with that column, Power BI will calculate it for you before anything else happens. So when you load a new model, the calculated column will get calculated for you so it is available. When their user changes the filters on the dashboard, the calculated columns do not get recalculated. Let me show you what I mean. So here we are again in Power BI and we have, this is our dashboard, it's a very simple dashboard. I give, it, I give that to you. But we have a product name and then we have a filter. So the filter is dates. When we change the dates, this will change too. Now, when these things are happening, 
there are no changes in our calculated column. It still has the same values because the calculations are still the same. So nothing gets recalculated for a calculated column. Okay? Let's continue. So the only time that a calculated column gets recalculated is when you press um, refresh, you know, when you refresh your data source. That's when you will see a new recalculation of the column. Calculated columns take up space in your memory. Okay, so for Excel users, it's um, very common to create their models with a lot of calculated columns, I guess, be because, you know, that's the way you do it in Excel. But if you do that, your file will get huge. Okay, and it is not a very effective way to do it. So try to avoid calculated columns when you don't need them. The next thing is it, it is like a normal column, you know, it can be used for measures for any kind of calculation that you'd like, and you can use them for relationships. So they are available for you in the relationship pane. Okay, so now let's move to measures. What are measures? Measures are used for calculations across rows. And again, let me show you an with an example of what I mean. It's much easier. So here we're again in Power BI. And uh, let's say that we want to know how many products we have sold in a specific period of time. So we will take quantity, we will remove unit price, and this will give you the number of products sold on that period. It's as simple as that. But I really recommend you that you actually create a measure for reasons that I'm going to show you in a second. Let's go back to the PowerPoint and then we will do that. So let's learn a little bit more about measures before we actually create one. Measures are not stored in RAM. That means that they are actually calculated on the fly and recalculated when the filter supplied changes. Okay, so when you open the file, it calculates once and then it recalculates when the user changes how the dashboard looks like. We will do an example in a second. Now it returns different answers depending on the filter supply and you saw that before, but we will do a new demonstration and can and should be used on other measures. It can be moved between tables but cannot be used for relationships, okay? Now, the fact that can measures can be reused is why I told you that we should do a measure of that column. Let's go back and now and explain all these. Okay, so we are here again in Power BI and uh, let's do some measures. So we want to create a measure so we can reuse this calculation. So it will be the sum of quantity or the details. So it's going to produce exactly the same result because it's the same thing that we're doing, okay? I recommend you that you disable, uh, you hide the ones that you don't need anymore. And here you have them. Now, we said that measures recalculate on the fly when filters applied change. And you see this. Okay, so if instead of product name, we would have uh, categories. You see it's again recalculating itself. So it changes according to the filters that are applied to it. Now we have put it here on the order details, but you can move them around. You can put them in the place that makes more sense that the user will actually find it. So think about 
how would you think as a user and that's the place you should be so now we talked about measures being able to be reused and i'm going to show you an example let's say that we want to calculate the uh, year to date quantity so how many products we've sold in quantity up to I mean this year up to today's date uh, we will use uh, total year to date and then here instead of adding the sum of total quantity the only thing you need to do is reuse your measure that does already that and then here you put your calendar which is called the date date and uh, here you have it now there are a lot of beneficial things about doing this the first thing is that if the column name will change for any reason the only way the, the only thing you need to do is to change it here and all the measures that reuse this measure will change accordingly so this will save you tons and tons of times in, in terms of administration and maintenance of your file it will be so much easier because you have it in one place you know you don't need to know okay where did i put that of course your measures will break but how fun is that so yeah let's do a recap about what we said so far about what those what the calculated column is and the measure to reinforce the learning okay so let's do a recap um, calculated columns are used for row by row calculations like in excel while measures are used for calculations across rows so when you are aggregating data Calculated columns are pre-calculated and stored, while measures are calculated and stored on the fly. Calculated columns will not get recalculated when filter changes on the dashboard, but measures will. Okay. Calculated columns will only recalculate on data refresh and will take up space in memory, while measures are not stored in RAM at all. Calculated columns act as a normal column, so it can be used for calculations and relationships, while measures can be reused, of course, for other measures, but cannot be used for relationships. They can, though, be moved between tables, and it will return different answers depending on the filters applied. Okay? So now you are an expert on this, right? Great! Okay, guys, so this is all for today. I hope you have a great, great Friday. As usual, if you like the video, please let me know by liking it or by sharing it with somebody that you know would like it too. Uh, suggestions, comments, questions on the video, let me know in the comment box below. And make sure you subscribe. I publish Power BI videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, where I dedicate Mondays for Power Query and Fridays for DAX. Last but not least, make sure you hit the bell to receive notifications. YouTube has removed the way that uh, notifications are received. So even if you subscribe to the channel, you will not get a notification if you don't click the bell when I publish new videos, okay? So have a great, great summer and a great weekend.